we're still looking for traces of human humane architecture on our islands and specifically here our island of Oahu. And uh, we're uh, connecting to where we have left about a month ago uh, where we talked about uh, Kaiser's, Henry J. Kaiser's, um, we called it avant-garde exotic Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we promised mm -hmm. we're going to revisit if yes. he has always done some, how did you pronounce that, mainstream? <laughs> I can't remember what I said about mainstream things. So so we have our co-host, once a month co-host, Soto Brown. Back. And here I am. Thank let's, you. Let's rock and roll. Let's Mr. rock and roll. Mr. Exotic. Uh, let's Mr. bring the Exotica. first picture, please. Yeah. Well, let's get started. We're talking about the Hawaiian Village Hotel, which opened in Waikiki in 1955. And when it started, it really was like village. It had uh, individual houses, and they had this sort of faux thatching on them that was actually woven by Samoans, but really wasn't part mm -hmm. of the structure. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, this pool, et cetera. So it really started out as kind of a low-key thing. Um, and in the background behind me, you can see the original opening, or the original... Um, this was the original appearance of the Hawaiian Village Hotel when it opened off Kalia Road, and it's just the same that uh, it's the same driveway that's there today. But as you know, because you go there all the time, it doesn't look anything like this anymore because it didn't stay like a village very mm -hmm. long. And mm -hmm. Henry J. Kaiser wanted to build things at a really fast pace, mm -hmm. and so very quickly the uh, Hawaiian Village started to grow. And he wanted things to be successful, right? And he wanted so, things to be so successful. So the next picture. We, we so, showed some goofy cars last time mm -hmm. because that was the avant-garde category. Correct, it's correct. Things that were sort of uh, uh, space agey. Right. But then he needed to make some money, right? Right. Well, he actually already had started his own car company. Uh, starting in 1947, he... Uh, partnered with a guy named Charles Frazier, and they created what was called the Kaiser Frazier Automobile Company. And the Kaiser Automobiles sold quite well initially, but by the early 50s, they were backlogged because they weren't selling as well. So they created this kind of kooky thing called the Kaiser Traveler, which was essentially an older model car from like a year or two earlier. They turned it into the first hatchback. Mm -hmm. They made this whole big cutout in the back, a tailgate that came down instead of a trunk, and then you had this whole huge mm -hmm. interior opening that you mm -hmm. could create. And that was a Kaiser Traveler. Mm -hmm. So that was a way of trying to get those yeah. cars out of the factory that people weren't buying as much. And, and we save the other ones that are even more mainstream for later when we're going mm -hmm. to talk about Kaiser's other projects. Like Kaiser's Hawaii other Kai. project, But exactly. we choose this one here to be a synonym for this sort of more mainstream, but still pretty sort of, sort of out there. edgy, you yeah. know, and yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of different. Correct. So S next picture is, here he is. There's the man. That's Henry J. Kaiser on the left, and uh, talking with some other guy in the grounds of the Hawaiian Village Hotel. And I showed, we just showed those uh, village-like settings. Well, as you can see, within a few years, it turned into a very modern type of structure. Uh, they had elements, very interestingly, of the primitive and the modern juxtaposed together. And that mm -hmm. was very typical of the 1950s in the, the rough textured primitive things next mm -hmm. to the smooth, for example, the, as, I, as I was saying to you, mm -hmm. the rough textured natural walls that they used in the lobby contrasted with a smooth terrazzo floor. Mm -hmm. So that was considered kind of the, the edgy way to do mm -hmm. it back in those mm -hmm. days. So we were talking the other genre of art, music. Mm -hmm. We were talking about exotica, exotica music. And we had selected for last time some rare ones, which mm -hmm. were actually little about the uh, sort of erotic exotic. Right. Because generally speaking, next picture, uh, they were pretty much erotic. Exotic. They were very much so. And this is a cover of a record by Martin Denny. Martin Denny is important because he got his start at the Hawaiian Village Hotel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he created a genre of music which today we call exotica. At the time, it didn't really have a name like that. But it was a combination of jazz mm -hmm. along with a lot of instruments and sound effects that were either from the natural world or instruments from other cultures, non-Western cultures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he put them together at the Hawaiian Village Hotel and mm -hmm. created this wonderful uh, type of music which is very, very much of that time yeah, period. And yeah. so. 
it really goes with that early architecture. That's kind of the soundtrack for the architecture. Oh, perfect. That's right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and, yeah. And, and sort of the eye candy version of that is next picture is the is, architecture. And here, so here's an early view of one of the first high rises at the Hawaiian Village. And they got built very quickly. Kaiser wanted things done fast. And so he, between 1955 and 1960, had a whole series of high rises built, which at the time was very much ahead of the rest of Waikiki's mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And as I was mentioning earlier, this again is a really good indication of the natural world in which these existing tall palm trees are there and there's this artificial natural-like pool contrasted with the very clean, stark lines of the building. And the lobby, which was located on the left on the ground floor in the image that you can see there, was entirely open. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, an interesting thing to do at that time, to really bring the outdoors in mm -hmm. rather than making a wall between the inside and the outside. Yeah. This was the trade winds go through, and right out there you see the natural world, you hear the birds, et cetera, et cetera. We just quoted the author, Miss Kaili Chun, Easy Breezy. All right. And this was pre-air conditioning That's era right. anyway. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. So the next picture, uh, Kaiser being a marketing genius. That's right? it. Mm -hmm. That's it. So the, the Kaiser Hawaiian Village Hotel, as we called it at the time, it wasn't really, that wasn't really its name, prom was promoted endlessly in every way that possibly they could do it. So it was used as the setting for the uh, first TV show that was uh, filmed in Hawaii, that was set in Hawaii, which was called Hawaiian Eye. This is a panel from a comic book from 1958, Dennis the Menace in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And Dennis and his parents, when they first arrive, uh, stay at the Hawaiian Village Hotel. And there you see right there, clearly, Dennis is sitting on top of where the sign is, just mm -hmm. so that the hotel gets promotion, even in a comic book, mm -hmm. which is pretty out there, mm -hmm. but and, worked. And one, one more back to music here, also very iconic uh, vinyl here. Yes. And the cool thing is, Kaiser used music as part of the promotion. He used not only, uh, this is a, a record by Alfred Apaka, who was his star singer until Alfred Apaka died unexpectedly in 1960. But you also see not only the association with Alfred Apaka and the village, but you see that it's got this cool logo type at the top of this record label, which is a 45 RPM disc. And you see it, it's got the signature, Henry J. Kaiser presents Hawaiian Village Records with this cool uh, kind of primitive looking HV mm -hmm. logo for the combination of the word Hawaiian and village with a grass house down in the corner right below the H. Mm -hmm. So a total package to, mm -hmm. to promote. This is an exotic Hawaiian village, but it's also modern comforts. And it, part of your exotic experience there will be the native Hawaiian music mm -hmm. as performed by some of the artists on Hawaiian village records. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The awesome. man knew what he was doing. Awesome, awesome. So next picture is another of these fast popping up buildings Exactly. Here. That's the Ocean Tower. Mm -hmm. um, you and I were going to try to keep track of what happened when. I think this is about 1950, 58, 59. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's on the beach looking forward, looking in from the beach. And it, those people are not just happened to be in those locations when yeah. the photographer snapped mm -hmm. the picture. Mm -hmm. This again is part of the promotion. Everybody's placed in the right place. The umbrellas are placed correctly. The models are in the right place. And you got two guys with surfboards yeah, to yeah. emphasize this is the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah, yeah. And this has all been uh, dramatically, as you were referring to, I go there, I want to get this straight. You right. know, I'm, I run by there. Right, right, difference. in person. It's, it's That's right. That's but right. I do it every morning, so I become a self-trained expert every morning and a little bit more. So this piece here, I think it's called the Alihi Tower now and has been dramatically changed okay. in the 80s. They added two, two more stories. Okay, okay. And if we go back to the picture, they took away this wonderful, easy breezy uh, uh, external staircase. Oh, which, right. Thanks to our host colleague Howard Wig and his insisting at the DPP, we we're able to do again. So I think it's come full circle, right? We did them way back. Then the IBC, the International Building Code, came, asked us to enclose them. Oh. Howard now convinced and take but, it down so we can do them again. So we're okay. See, full I didn't. That, that's a very good, important mm -hmm. architectural mm -hmm. point because in that view. You've got a very clear architectural dramatic element that yeah. that zigzag yeah, and the yeah, shadows yeah. it casts yeah. and the fact that it's kind of a floating stairway yeah. and that it's just the stairs and a railing mm -hmm. is a dramatic and interesting element on the exterior yeah. of the building, which 
I wouldn't have known until you just said mm -hmm. that legally that and, became and that's impossible unfortunately to do. Too late, or it's never too late, but um, for this building here, it has been changed, so right. the easy it's reason is it's gone and, no. and probably not going to be brought back. But in no. new buildings, we're going to get this back. Okay. So this is, um, we, we would see, if you step back a little bit more from here, you see another feature of uh, right. the whole village, which and is And there it is. That. Mm -hmm. Well, see, on the left, you can see the lagoon, which was constructed by Henry J. Kaiser in what had been a shallow part of the ocean. Mm -hmm. and and it was a shallow, rocky area that was not conducive to being able to go to the mm -hmm, beach. Mm -hmm. So now these were Duke's fish ponds. And right. these were this was part of where Duke Hanamoku grew up, mm -hmm. and it was where also too for Native Hawaiians that type of shallow water is where you can get certain types of seaweed, limu, yeah, yeah, as yeah. well as other sea creatures mm -hmm. that you would eat. Or you do by, the hooky lao, right? Well, well and, you know, and by the time the 1950s is here, you don't want that anymore. You mm -hmm. want a nice beach. So Henry J. Kaiser got government permission to do a huge amount of dredging. They dredged out this con lagoon, which, as we were just saying, looks sort of natural, but is not. In, it's, in fact, entirely created. Mm -hmm. They built a new uh, wide beach on the ocean side, which is called the Duke Ahanamoku Beach. And in this photograph, also the, the center in the photograph of, of, of our attention is that pink jeep. Well, Henry J. Kaiser had purchased the company that made those Jeeps, and they created what was called the Jeep Gala model, mm -hmm. which was meant to be sold and used at different resorts and tropical areas, including, of course, the Hawaiian Village Hotel. At the time, we thought here that those pink Jeeps, as we called them, mm -hmm. were uniquely mm -hmm. sold and used at the Hawaiian Village mm -hmm. Hotel. We didn't realize that, first of all, they made them in blue and green also, mm -hmm. but secondly, that they sold them and used them in other and, places. And we didn't know that you and I saw the one that Elvis had in Graceland. That, and we both have seen and mm -hmm. touched, and mm -hmm. I have a photo of me with the pink Jeep that mm -hmm. Elvis got in Graceland. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that pink Jeep that we just saw in that postcard view is yeah, part yeah. of the whole Kaiser, yeah, yeah. Kaiser domain and, and dynasty. And in fact, uh, you know, we, we thought it's specific too, but you say it's more generally alluring to other tropics because yes. this car was the star in another movie that was one of the first movies you saw. Right. Yeah, well, it was. Uh, it also appeared in an Elvis film called Fun in Acapulco, mm -hmm. which is obviously Mexico. Mm -hmm. And yes, I saw that film at the Kaimaki Theater, uh, not because I wanted to, but because I had to sit through it before the movie I really wanted to see, which was called Go Go Mania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> okay, we're going to go into our little break in a minute, but we bring up the next picture really quick, which is uh, what then is to come after the break, is we look at some of the artifacts from the past from a today's perspective and do a little bit of reflection on that one. Right. And this is just me the other day when the, the cleaning guy was there. So that pond, I know it smells pretty badly every <laughs> now and then. You said someone got almost killed there or got yeah, killed get, in there. Got killed in the so dream. this is nature under dictatorship. It's staging it right. right it's something right. a lagoon doesn't want to be there. In other no. tropics, yes, Blue Lagoons. There's another movie with Brooke Shields, which yeah, reminds right. me of some childhood. You know? <laughs> okay, this is a point to get some break here. Yeah. And see you back in a minute with uh, DeSoto and Martin about Kaiser's mainstream exotic Hawaii. Okay. Aloha, Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 in the afternoon. Do not tune in in the morning. My The topic is energy efficiency. It sounds dry as heck, but it's not. We're paying $5 billion a year for imported oil. My job is to shave that, shave that, shave that down in homes and buildings while delivering better comfort, better light, better air conditioning, better everything. So if you're interested in your future, you'd better tune in to me. Three o'clock every other Monday, code green, aloha, and thank you very much. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Kaiser's Mainstream Exotic Hawaii, and we're looking at the lagoon again. 
But we talked enough about the lagoon. Let's talk about the two buildings that came next. Right. One in 58, which is the lagoon tower. No, that's uh, no, no, that's 67. Oh, sorry, man. You got your numbers yeah, right. Yeah, what yeah, what yeah, do yeah. I know? What do I Not know? Not you. Know. That's why you have me on as a historian. <laughs> that, that, that that's the true. lagoon that tower. That's true. There it is. Yeah. And this is just just so we make it clear. Kaiser Henry J. Kaiser was no longer involved in the in the company at this point. He was no longer involved with the hotel. In fact, he had died. Mm -hmm. So this is the same site, but now it's under new management. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I took this picture on my daily run here. Uh, the architect, is, his name is Bauer, and um, it's, it's rather interesting to look at if you analyze it. In the next picture, uh, I, I'm, I'm deeply in love with these curves here since the last couple days when I was looking at it. I mean, can't get it more curvy. This is most curvy you can get in plan and in section. And it gives you this amazing sort of feeling of like being free and almost like on a cliff. Because these taper back, as you can see on the center of the, of the picture there. We talked before the show that m most likely no one would ever do this anymore, would go through the effort, uh, the sort of financial effort, but also sort of the philosoph philosophical background and, and ambition to kind of do that, right? Right. It's, it's and I, 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 you know, again, I'm not an architect, I'm not a builder, but I do know that the more complex and the more individual work you've got to do, mm -hmm. the more expensive something mm -hmm. is going to be. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. making a completely curved form is probably not going to be yeah. economically viable anymore. And, 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 and on top of that, we always massage ideas for new shows, and we talked about some crazy cantilevers being yeah. a potential show for the future. Absolutely. These are crazily cantilevers. Yes, they are. They so, are. Right. You know, right. And so I understand what you're saying, too. To that degree, and, and the next picture, you can be on these on these lanais and, and have the feeling you're out there, you're floating, but as well there are these slabs left and right, and in fact the lagoon tower has them buttressed, mm -hmm. meaning they're, they're larger at the bottom and larger right. at the top. Right. And this is different than these days where everything is literal and symbolic. Mm -hmm. This was abstract and uh, basically pretty much uh, alluding to something. Right. And, and you could see some kind of mangrove trees in there. You and know, I can some. also see the curves of palm tree trunks, too. Mm -hmm. You can, you can. And and that's, you know, that's the interpretation anybody mm -hmm. can have when mm -hmm. they want to look mm -hmm. at it and say, well, you yeah. see what you want to see. Yeah. And different today's symbolism of foreign liner imprint uh, palm leaves, you can credit uh, some functionality to all these things, which if you buttress something, this is why the Gothic architecture mm -hmm. has introduced that it's a structural means. Right. Something that that's, that's why nature does it. Something is stronger, right. closer that's to the right. roots, and that's tapers right. to get smaller at the top. Correct. So that's what the Correct. That's does. what a big tree trunk looks like. Exactly. And the next picture is another feature that I call the cool lanai. And you know what? I'm now that I'm looking at that. That mm -hmm. looks like the state capitol. It, it does. So we have this little thing going on right. here, right? Right. About these very much inspired by nature and mushrooms. Mm -hmm. They call these mushroom pillars. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright has done them in the. Uh, 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 what's it called? Um, Johnson Wax Building. Oh, yeah, okay, there, yes, there right, right, right. And so, uh, but what I want to point out, so this is a cool crown because we see there's some shadow in the back. So this thing is shading at the top, something that towers today, as we'll see in a little bit, don't do anymore. And you can see two round long eyes right yeah, below it, too. Yeah, yeah, so very sophisticated and metaphorical, I would say. Yes, right? I agree. Not, not symbolical, but metaphorical. Mm -hmm. And there's certain meanings and, and multiple duties behind so done fairly well and the next picture is then the other tower that most people associate with a wine village right. right and that's the that's the rainbow tower exactly. and that followed the following year that followed in 1968 and mm -hmm. and the rainbow tower you i don't think we got a picture of it but it's it's famous because it's got this tile uh, motif that mm -hmm. goes runs from the ba the base all the way to the top mm -hmm. and it's one of the largest yeah. tile it claims pieces, to be actually the largest, largest yeah. in the world mm -hmm. uh, it just went through underwent a restoration a yeah. short time ago mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's why it's called the rainbow yeah, yeah, yeah. tower but this is the more sort of and, and, utilitarian and as view. you know me by now I intentionally didn't choose that one because right. everyone knows that already right. I want to point out to something that most people Correct. we want uh, not not see so the building orientation which we always talk about orientation is key this facade is facing 
facing southeast. So the morning sun is going to be kept away from these vertical pilasters and slabs that separate the units. Mm -hmm. And once the sun comes around, and this is, by the way, the north facade. So thank you. This is the other facade. This is in the sun, as you can see. So on the other one that we saw previously, I have to correct myself, that's facing northwest. So the slabs are facing from the pretty brutal and low west sun. So here. Uh, on the other picture that's in the sun, we can see it the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So once again, it's like there is some floral uh, sort of um, inspiration going on. There's some googiness to mm -hmm. these soft-edged um, right. balconies. Right. But rather than what we would do this today, we were going to literally allure to some kind of a nature. Yes. We do this here in a performatively way. Correct. And, and this building, let's just say, and go wild, knock out the glass. This would be an easy breezy stack mm -hmm. lanai, as Kurt Sandburn likes to call it. And that gets us to the next picture. Right. Where uh, Kurt, uh, <laughs> our most activist journalism and critical voice on the islands, which has to come back, by the way, and right. take our seats here for That's a while. Right. He promises he does. to us. So That's Kurt, good, please, because we, he's in San Francisco now. We, we take you up on that. And so this is um, something that we actually don't want to talk about in depth too much because it's uh, pointing out to a potential right. new show, another right. show, which right. is about the Waikikian, right. which is Pete Wimberly. And by the way, we have to do the homework, but I think picture number four, I'm still pretty sure this is Pete. But yeah, the I, know, they, is, I, I have to check. That's my you know, picture, the guy with Henry Kaiser, but that, right, right. But that's right. OK. Right. But the, this, this building guy. on the uh, on 18 is called the Grand Waikikian, and right. very tragically, like the uh, Kalia Tower, I think it was called, we talked in the mm -hmm. last show, was replacing the innovative Kaiser Dome. This right. Grand Waikikian is unfortunately has been replacing the Waikikikian, which yes. was a rather very, very um, exotic. <sighs> very exotic, very iconic, and very interesting and uh, dramatic and uh, kind of kooky out there mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. And the Waikikian Hotel and property were located on a little skinny strip of land right next mm -hmm. to the Hawaiian Village property, and eventually the Hawaiian Village was able to take over that property, build this timeshare mm -hmm. tower on what had been this cool 50s thing. Mm -hmm. And the next picture gives us sort of a panoramic, number 19, gives us a panoramic overview that I shot the other morning about what we see to the left, the rainbow tower that we just saw. The little thing in the little space in between is the Lagoon Tower. And then the one next to that is what we're talking about, how dramatically that uh, former called Ocean Tower, now right. Alihi Tower, has been transformed or modified. Right. And in the back, the, the very back, you see the Grand Waikikian. And then to the, to the very right, uh, you see the recent uh, trend, which is basically not even hotel anymore. It's called timeshare. Correct. So they built these huge, humongous pieces there. And this sort of Grant Waikiki, and I think was the first one of mm -hmm. these series. Mm -hmm. And we want to point out now number 20, there's a little uh, picture sequence here going on that I, again, pictures I took. Once uh, the newest ones called the uh, uh, Grand Islander was under construction. And it made me think about when these really heavy prefab concrete skirts came on the building. I couldn't help myself to think about the mumuization of mm -hmm. architecture, mm -hmm. right? Right. And that's another show we want to do that's is about the skins, do. the first, that's right. the second, and the third one. Right. So um, this is, again, a glimpse of that to just saying, why in the world do we start to sort of missionary these buildings right. and basically overdress them if we want so? Right. And the next picture um, is a courtesy to our tropic hearing friend, David Rockwood, with whom I share that. And at a certain point, I started to put these things on the, on the roof of the building, and he said, that looks like she wants to be a queen. Because mm -hmm. she's so got a crown. She's got a crown. And then on the right, exactly. we've got a picture of uh, Queen Kapiolani, who was the wife of King David Koakawa. And she's wearing a crown because she is legitimately mm -hmm. a queen. Mm -hmm. And she was more legitimate to wear than the building. Yeah, it's, right. I, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh -huh. And the next picture is even more critical because you see some people, uh, they're very typical for our time in the front. These are homeless people yes. on the beach. Right. So I would say the queen, to my knowledge, and you tell me because you're the historian, actually took care of her people. That was, much, there right? was a great, uh, the ali'i, the nobility of Hawaii in the 19th century felt a very strong mm -hmm. uh, commitment to take mm -hmm. care of their people. Mm -hmm. So here was like, it's decorated as to be the queen, right. but it's actually Uncle Sam, as it you sure see, is. Who, who, who invented. Who's, 
who's in, who's in control now. Who invented that? Exactly. So that gets us to the last, more extreme uh, <laughs> thing that this is what it's all about, right? It's the Grand Islander, and here are the Grand the Islanders. Grand Islanders. I, I, I took this from the website. You can see it as a subtitle. It's called The Ten Things Not to Wear in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it reminds us of how important it is to make this show about the three skins. Yes, right. right. Correct. So you really wonder what are we doing, right? I mean, we came from these really, really sort of very imaginative, um, you know, very sort of interestingly spicy yes. interpretations of the local culture and blending it with with the mainland stuff. And it was really, it was really. I try to avoid to say the cool, the word cool, but it was right. I think that one of the things that also too that we see that's differed a great deal is the first as we keep talking about the openness mm -hmm. of the lack of air conditioning, mm -hmm. uh, not only in individual rooms but in the public spaces as well. Yeah. We see a more enclosed environment. We see a more controlled artificial environment. I think we also see some level of, and you just said there's a there's a lot less risk taking. Mm -hmm. There's a lot less edginess. Mm -hmm. And you always have to be in a, in a safe space for yeah, people yeah, yeah. to want to come and stay mm -hmm. in your place. So you don't want to be too kooky. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, particularly in this early uh, Hawaiian village era, they were being quite innovative. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were doing yeah. some really crazy stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. there mm -hmm. um, that was kind of, uh, and I get the feeling that Henry Kaiser was sort of, uh, let's just go ahead and do it. Yeah, let's yeah. just try it. Let's and, build this thing and, and we'll see how it works. Maybe that's a good point to close off with the last picture which is like, why don't we reconnect to, so I allow myself to, from what we saw from, you know, the Grand Islander, I call this, you know, de-evolution, and I think we should re-evolve. Yep. And by the way, you know, you as a historian, it's sort of responsible about the subject matter of political or cultural correctness, right? Uh, Kaiser, by the way, did not wear an Aloha shirt, I recognize, right? No. So he didn't come to pretend like he knows about Hawaiian culture, right? But he brought something to Hawaiian culture that Hawaiian culture didn't have, which was basically make a living after the plantation went away, right? And you know what else he did, too? And this is uh, what we talked about earlier. He did, in fact, showcase elements of Hawaiian culture very actively mm -hmm. in his choice of musicians and his promotion mm -hmm. of the music that he associated with the Hawaiian Village mm -hmm. Hotel. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're going to close with picture number 24 one more time, which is our provocation and saying, let's reconnect. This is Primitiva. Let's wear less. Let's be easy breezy. Let's bring the Stecklin eyes back. But most importantly, let's house all people, right? right? So that's what we need. So we have some severe, serious issues here going on that tourism is just covering up. So probably typology wise, you know, when we build high, we got to take care of other people too. Right. And and, and we have to acknowledge too that uh, Honolulu is a high rise city. Yeah, yeah. And it is not a sleepy Polynesian village like the early Hawaiian village hotel. Yeah. It is a very densely populated, congested urban city with a lot of big buildings and a lot of people. Absolutely perfect closing notes, DeSoto. Thank, Thank you, you very much for Thank another you. Thank great you. enlightenment Thank you. here. Thank you. And see you back for our once a month show. You shall. All righty. Okay. Mm -hmm.